Your Majesty, take care of your son. In. Law Wei Hanzi. He's going to fight against those ministers outside the East Gate again. A minister ran to the Ganlu Palace and shouted at Li Shimin. This Mr. Wei is just a fool. I have instructed you not to fight at the East Gate. Li Shimin shouted angrily. Let's go to the West Gate, we can't fight at the East Gate. Wei Hao shouted at the ministers at the East Gate. Keywords of the novel. Zhen Guan Han Su No Pop Ups, Zhen Guan Han Su TXT Complete Collection Download, Zhen Guan Han Su Latest Chapter Reading. Did I fight in Chapter 1? You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Did I fight in Chapter 1? Wei Hao has beaten up the young master of Wei Tsong's family again, and he probably needs to compensate a lot of money. Ah! Wei Furong has really done evil and gave birth to a fool. I heard that this time the fool was also knocked unconscious by someone, and he will still lose the fight. Do you know what? The young man from Wei Tsong's family led two or three dozen soldiers to fight against fools, some of whom were soldiers in the army and even brought sticks. The fools were so foolish that they fought against people with bare hands. Can they win? In the western city of Chang'an, after tea and dinner, the neighbors were discussing the absurd matter of Wei Furong's son, Wei Haowei's only son, Wei Hanzi. Master, the young master has already woken up, but he's clamoring to go back. A steward came over and said to Wei Furong, who was sitting in the living room sighing. Wei Furong is about forty years old, with a plump figure and a wealthy face. Where are we going back? The silly energy is coming up again. Wei Furong heard this and stood up, angrily walking outside, at this moment, Wei Hao was standing on the bed in the room, looking at the densely packed people standing below. There were men and women, all dressed in blue and grey clothes, while women were dressed in blue clothes, what puzzled Wei Hao was why they were all wearing long clothes, which were obviously ancient costumes. Especially when Wei Hao asked them what year it was now, they said it was the fourth year of the Zhengguan era, which completely shattered Wei Hao. Fool, if you don't come down yet, do you want to be beaten? Wei Furong arrived at Wei Hao's room and shouted, pointing at him. How do you know my name? Wei Hao was also called a fool in his past life, doing things foolishly, but he was very good at reading. I'm your father, how come I don't know your name? Wei Furong was so angry, this little rabbit didn't even know him. Come on, I'm your father. Do you dare to take advantage of me? Wei Hao stood there and shouted at Wei Furong. He didn't know what his father was like. Is he still pretending to be his father? You bastard. Wei Furong said as he found the stick that was holding the door and was about to go and hit Wei Hao. Upon seeing that the situation was not good, Wei Hao immediately jumped off the bed and rushed out of the door. Wei Furong chased after him with a stick, and Wei Hao saw a big tree ahead. He immediately jumped up and rubbed a few times before getting up, very skilled. Sleeping trough, how did I get up? Wei Hao stood on the branch of the tree, looking down in surprise, while Wei Furong was standing below holding a stick. Come down, you idiot, dare to run away, dare to say it's my dad. Come on, come down, let's argue and argue. Wei Furong threatened, pointing a stick at Wei Hao. No, what's going on? I'm not dreaming, right? Wei Hao felt something was wrong because standing on a tree, he could see further and see that in the distance, there were all these low houses, not a single tall building. This was abnormal. Are they really saying it? He really crossed the river. Young master, come down quickly. The master should be angry now. Come down quickly. A steward next to him advised Wei Hao. Wei Hao didn't react, he was still thinking, how could he possibly have traveled? I am a master of science and engineering from one of the top three universities in China. To celebrate the passing of my graduation thesis defense, I went out with my classmates for a drink and ended up drinking in ancient times, or in the Tang dynasty. So, is this really the fourth year of the Zhengguan reign? Is Li Shimin the emperor? Wei Hao asked the people below. 
You bastard, you dare to call your majesty's name directly. If you come down, I won't be able to kill you. Wei Furong trembled with anger and cursed at Wei Hao again. This is simply outrageous. Is the emperor's name something ordinary people can call directly? Ah, really ah, oh my goodness. Wei Hao was shocked to hear this and really traveled through time. I don't want to travel by myself. In ancient times, there was no fun in modern times. How can we live without a mobile phone? Master, master, there have been many people coming from Wei Tsong's mansion, saying they want to find a young master to reason with. At this moment, a servant ran outside and said to Wei Furong. You, you, wait for me. Wei Furong said and immediately went out with a stick. Master, stick. Stick can't be brought over. The steward behind reminded Wei Furong. Upon hearing this, Wei Furong casually threw the stick away. Young master, come down quickly. The master has left, and will hide the stick later. The steward below said to Wei Hao above the tree. Upon hearing this, Wei Hao slid down the tree trunk. Young master, we can't fight again next time. You know how much you're fighting, isn't it? And you'll have to pay a lot of money. The steward advised Wei Hao. Wei Hao had no memory of him at all, nor did he know who he was, but seeing him taking pictures of the bark on his clothes, Wei Hao felt that this person was good. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Then the steward waved his hand to disperse the servants and maids watching the commotion, and asked Wei Hao, young master, do you still have a headache? They all have such a big bump. Bow. Wei Hao said and touched his head. Hiss. Just as he touched the bag on his head, Wei Hao gasped in pain. Mad, who did it? Who? You dare to hit me on the head. Wei Hao was so angry. In school, who dares to hit himself? It's always oneself who bullies others. Young master, don't you remember what happened this morning? You had a fight with the second young master of the Wei Tsong family, and when someone came in twenty or thirty with a stick in hand, you foolishly rushed over to fight them, got beaten in the head, and passed out. The steward explained to Wei Hao. At that moment, there was a commotion coming from the front yard, and Wei Hao turned his head to look over there. The master probably had an argument with the people from Wei Tsong's mansion, the steward explained to Wei Hao. Upon hearing this, Wei Hao was about to walk that way, holding on to the mood of watching the excitement. Hey, young master, you can't go, you can't go. The steward immediately dragged Wei Hao away. Wei Hao can't appear now otherwise we don't know what will happen. What are you afraid of? Let's go, brother, take you to watch the excitement. Wei Hao said, dragging him forward. When we arrived at the front yard, we saw Wei Furong arguing with a group of people, and of course, there were also many people standing behind Wei Furong to help. Your son brought two or three dozen people to beat my son, but he lost. Do you still have the face to come over? Don't think that you are the minister of the People's Republic of China's minister, so I'm afraid of you. It's not that your son is foolish and foolish, falsely accusing my son of secretly watching a girl take a shower. Will my son beat a fool? Did you move your hands first? Wei Hao stood not far away, watching and listening to them speak. Oh my, we've been arguing for a while now. It's time to take action. It's so boring to argue like this. If it were me, I would have taken action a long time ago. Wei Hao stood there, looking at it with enthusiasm at first, but later on, he felt bored. Young master, what are you doing? The fool is here. At this moment, the people in Wei Tsong's mansion noticed Wei Hao standing behind them watching the excitement and immediately shouted. And all the people in Wei Tsong's mansion turned their heads, then turned around and glared angrily at Wei Hao. Hey, why are you staring at me? Wei Hao looked at them with a hint of confusion. Now he hasn't gotten used to his identity and doesn't even know that he has crossed over to this fool. Kid, you broke my son's tooth with a punch. 
what should we do about this? Wei Tsong pushed aside the crowd and slowly walked up to Wei Hao, pointing at him with an unpleasant demeanor and questioning him. What teeth, I didn't fight. Wei Hao said subconsciously. Do you dare to play tricks or not? Wei Tsong became even more angry when he heard Wei Hao say this. After so many people saw it, he even played tricks and refused to admit it. What are you doing? Ah, uh, Wei Hao was just about to say that it wasn't me doing it, but he immediately realized that it might have been his own body doing it. Did I fight? Wei Hao looked at the steward next to him and asked. Young master, where else did you get the bag on your head? The steward looked at Wei Hao helplessly. Oh, did they fight? Wei Hao pointed to Wei Tsong and continued asking. Well, it's him, I'm so strict with you, do you dare to hit me? Wei Hao said and threw a punch, hitting Wei Tsong in the face. Wei Tsong collapsed straight down. Oh my goodness! Wei Furong, who was behind him, almost scared to death. Dare to hit our master, do it. The servants brought over by Wei Tsong saw that their master had been beaten, which was not bad. Then they rushed towards Wei Hao. Wei Hao pulled the steward behind him and raised his fist, almost punching him one by one. Stop fighting, stop fighting. Wei Furong shouted loudly, and the servants in the mansion rushed over and began to hug the people on both sides, especially Wei Hao. However, both servants couldn't hold each other, and Wei Hao wanted to rush over and hit the servants who had already been hugged by Wei Kong. Bunny, you can kill me. Wei Furong rushed over and hugged Wei Hao. Wei Furong was very fat, and as soon as he hugged Wei Hao, he felt a bit overwhelmed. You step aside, you see, if I don't kill them, you dare to hit me. Wei Hao shouted to Wei Furong. Oh my, my son. Even if you kill them, you will be imprisoned. Stop it. Wei Furong was almost furious and scolded Wei Hao. Upon hearing this, Wei Hao was stunned and thought that the person in front of him might really be the father of this body. If it were true, then he would still need to give some face. They've all hit home, you dare not fight back, are you so cowardly? Wei Hao still looked at Wei Furong with a stiff expression. You, you, drag him to his own yard. Without my command, don't let him come out. Wei Furong was so angry. They didn't come to fight, they came to argue. Master, master, wake up. Oh, why are you still spitting out a few teeth? At this moment, Wei Tsong's servant helped him, but when Wei Tsong spat blood on the ground, he also spat out a few teeth. Upon hearing this, Wei Furong felt a headache and stared at the servants, urging them to quickly drag Wei Hao back. End of this chapter 2. Chapter 2 Transcription you are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 Transcription Wei Hao was eventually dragged back to the yard and locked up in a room that looked like a study, with the butler accompanying him in. Young master, why are you so impulsive? That Wei Tsong, he is the minister of the ministry of the people at that time. We can't afford to provoke him. This is a big deal. The steward said anxiously to Wei Hao. Didn't you say he hit me? Wei Hao felt a bit strange and turned his head to look at the steward, saying. I was going to say it was his son who did it. You didn't even finish listening, so you started. The steward was about to cry. He had just finished speaking, but before he could finish speaking, Wei Hao punched him out. The rest of the conversation was so shocked that he couldn't speak. Ah, his son called. Why didn't you tell him earlier? Wei Hao also regretted it a bit upon hearing this. Young master, I don't know how much money the mansion will have to pay this time. Otherwise, if Wei Tsong reports to the government, the young master may have to stay in the prison. The steward clenched his hand with a worried expression, unsure of what to do for a moment. Isn't it? Wei Hao felt a bit flustered. What official is my father? Wei Hao thought of this and asked the steward. The master is either an official or has some money, the steward said anxiously. Sleeping trough. 
Wei Hao felt that the situation was a bit big at the moment. He hit the son of the official himself, and since his father was not yet an official, it was strange that he was too impulsive and didn't inquire in advance. Young master, you're not allowed to go out. I'll go outside and inquire for you. Don't go out. The steward warned Wei Hao. Wei Hao nodded, feeling very depressed. He inexplicably traveled through time and then got into a fight. Now he might have to go to jail inexplicably. Time travel was already a bad thing, but now he still has to go to jail. Wei Hao dared not even think down. My dad seems to be quite wealthy, shouldn't he be able to solve it? Wei Hao sat there, feeling very unconfident. There was nothing he could do, and now he could only rely on that cheap dad. After waiting for almost an hour without any movement, Wei Hao couldn't sit still and wanted to go open the door. Seven or eight servants stood up at the door, all smiling and pleasing. How's it going up ahead? Wei Hao pretended to be calm, having never seen anything big before. I don't know yet, but we're still talking. Wei Tsong is still at the mansion, but there hasn't been any argument. It should be good news, said one of the servants. Oh, I didn't leave, I didn't leave well, I didn't leave well. Let me take a look, I'll apologize to them. Wei Hao said as he lifted his leg and wanted to go out, knowing that the other person hadn't left, indicating that there was some discussion. Young master, don't go. A few servants immediately blocked Wei Hao's way. This fool has caused enough trouble already, we can't let him cause any more trouble. Young master, can you just wait inside? Don't go to the front yard. If there is another conflict, it won't be good. One of the older servants advised Wei Hao, while the other servants nodded repeatedly like mashed garlic. No one believed that Wei Hao would apologize when he went to the front yard, and maybe there would be a fight. They knew better than anyone what their young master was like. He acted impulsively without going through his brain, and the key was his strength. When Wei Furong saw that Wei Hao couldn't finish his studies, he invited a martial arts instructor to teach him how to practice martial arts. He wanted Wei Hao to have something close to him so that he wouldn't suffer losses when going out. But in recent years, Wei Furong has regretted this decision countless times, and Wei Hao doesn't know how many things he caused outside. It's useless to say anything about it. As long as someone provokes him a little, he can start a fight with others, and even if someone encourages him a little, he will fall in love. Upon hearing what they said, Wei Hao knew it was impossible to go there, so he reluctantly went to the study where the servants closed the door. Ah! Several servants almost sighed at the same time. The master doesn't know what he did, he gave birth to eight daughters, each of whom is exceptionally intelligent, but this only son is, said one of the servants. Speak less, don't be afraid of being beaten. Another servant scolded in a low voice. Wei Hao continued to wait inside for about an hour, and the steward returned. How did you come back? Wei Hao stood up and said to the steward. Isn't it important to inquire about this? Young master, the old master has lost 300 guan, and with the addition of the best restaurant in the mansion, they haven't reported it to the authorities or pursued it. This matter has finally been settled. By the way, the old master will come soon, and the young master may be punished. The steward sighed in his heart, saying that the cost this time is not small, it can be said to have hurt the morale of the mansion. Oh. 300 guan, is that much? Wei Hao asked, knowing that he would definitely have to compensate, but Wei Hao was a bit unclear about how much the 300 guan was. Can it not be too much? 300 guan yuan, you can buy 60 acres of good farmland around Chang'an City. The key is that restaurant, which is the most profitable restaurant in our family, worth over a thousand guan yuan. Someone offered a thousand guan yuan to buy this restaurant before, but the master didn't agree. Oh, now they have to compensate. The steward also complained to Wei Hao a bit. Oh, 60 acres of fertile land. Wei Hao looked at the steward with confusion, but he still had no idea. Mmm. The steward nodded. 
Is there a lot? Wei Hao continued to ask. Young master, my monthly salary is only 200 won. Normally, I can work for five months with a salary of 300 guan. I estimate that I will have to work in the mansion for more than a hundred years. The steward said and calculated for Wei Hao. As a steward, working in the mansion for 200 won per month is still a high income. As an ordinary maid, it is between 50 and 100 won. What, so much? Wei Hao understood at this moment. He made a big loss this time. According to later generations, managing a job for a month is equivalent to 2,000 yuan, and the usual value is about 10,000 yuan, while 300 guan yuan is 3 million yuan. In addition, there is a restaurant worth 1,000 guan yuan, which costs 13 million yuan and a fight costs 13 million yuan. I would rather go to jail. Wei Hao pounded his chest and feet, feeling heartbroken at the moment. 13 million. Go, go now, there's still time to back out now. You brat. Wei Furong happened to push the door in at the moment, and when he heard Wei Hao say these words, he was furious and cursed at him. At this moment, Wei Hao also stood up. It was clear now that this was his own biological father. If it wasn't his biological father, who could have been so open dot minded? Humph, you knew you were causing trouble for me. I told you not to leave the mansion, but you can't stay at home. Starting today, you won't be allowed to leave the mansion for a month. If you dare to leave, I'll break your leg. Wei Furong saw him so honest, and his tone softened. Well, but does that dad need to pay so much money? Wei Hao asked carefully. This time, he's been a bit aggressive and feels a bit guilty. If you don't lose money, go to jail. Sit for more than 10 or 20 years. Wei Furong stared at Wei Hao and said fiercely, feeling more helpless in his heart. Okay, dad, don't worry, I'll find a way to earn this money back for you, Wei Hao promised, patting his chest at Wei Furong. Upon hearing this, Wei Furong couldn't believe it at all. He didn't know what his own son was like yet. Will he still make money? If you don't cause any trouble, it's considered a blessing from your ancestors. It's useless to say less. This month, after copying the Analex and knowing all the characters inside, my father has given up on this matter, Wei Furong said sternly to Wei Hao. After copying and recognizing, can we go out? Wei Hao immediately asked. Of course, Wei Hao hopes to go out and see more and appreciate the prosperous scenery of the Tang Dynasty and Chang'an. As a result, the Tang Dynasty has been banned, so how can we play? Humph, Steward Wang. Keep an eye on the young master for me. If you dare to go out, report to me at any time. Wei Furong snorted coldly and then explained to the steward next to Wei Hao, who was also Steward Wang. Don't hum, can you go out? Give me the right word. Wei Hao stood there and shouted at Wei Furong's back. After copying, you can go out once you know everyone. Wei Furong shouted angrily, and after shouting, he left. Wei Furong also knew that having his foolish son copy and recognize the Analex would take a monkey year and a horse month. And the steward standing beside him also resented that iron was not made of steel, sighing frequently in his heart. Bring me the Analex. Wei Hao said as he sat on the table in the study and reached up to let his sleeve down. Okay, young master. The steward said and handed a roll of bamboo slips to Wei Hao. This. Analex. Is there no paper to copy? Wei Hao looked at manager Wang in surprise and asked, it's actually a book on bamboo slips. This surprised Wei Hao. Young master, ordinary people can't find books like this. If you want to use paper, it's expensive. The key is that you didn't read it before, young master. I'll sharpen the ink for you. Manager Wang said and went to sharpen the ink. Wei Hao looked at the brush on the pen holder, then at the bamboo book, and finally at the paper on his desk. It was still yellow paper, and he let out a sigh. Isn't there any better paper like this? 
Wei Hao held the yellow paper with a disdainful expression and asked Manager Wan. Young master, having paper is not bad. Ordinary people practice calligraphy on sandboxes, but young master, you haven't written a few words, and the master probably hasn't prepared them for you. Steward Wang looked at Wei Hao and said, a fool who only knows how to fight and cause trouble. What kind of paper do you need? Okay, hey, I've never used a brush before, Wei Hao said with a sigh, holding the brush. As a modern person, he doesn't have a hobby for writing brushes. Speaking, Wei Hao started copying the analects with a brush. Most of the characters inside were recognized, although they were traditional Chinese characters. However, Wei Hao was still able to guess a large part of them, but there were still some that he didn't know. After about three days, Wei Hao finished copying and his arms were sore. All right, Steward Wang, let's go find my dad. I want to go out and take a look. Wei Hao said, holding the stack of grass paper and going to find Wei Furong. Young master, I reckon you won't be able to leave, said Steward Wang with a smile as he looked at Wei Hao. Why? Wei Hao looked at Manager Wang puzzled. It's only been three days, and I guess the master's anger hasn't dissipated yet, Manager Wang smiled and said to Wei Hao. Upon hearing this, Wei Hao agreed, but he thought to himself that Wei Furong should always be trustworthy when speaking. End of this chapter Chapter 3 Will the Princess Not Get Married? You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 3 Will the Princess Not Get Married? Wei Hao was very nervous and went to find Wei Furong, but he had no choice. This was his biological father, and Wei Hao accepted it. In the end, I found him in Wei Furong's study, only to find that Wei Furong was actually sleeping in the study. Dad, Dad, wake up. Wei Hao went over and shouted to Wei Furong. Hmm, how are is here? Hmm. What are you doing here? At first, Wei Furong was very happy, but then he thought about Wei Hao's past and immediately asked him very seriously. Copy it. Wei Hao said and handed the stack of yellow paper to Wei Furong. Copied. Just you. Wei Furong was skeptical. Before, let's not say that he copied a book of analects, he didn't even copy a sentence. Well, after copying, take a look. Wei Hao handed it over again, and Wei Furong took it over, still looking at Wei Hao with suspicion. It was really you who copied it, wasn't it from a scholar outside? Dad, I haven't even gone out before, how can I find it? Besides, they can only write words like me. Wei Hao looked at Wei Furong angrily and said. Wei Furong lowered his head to look at those words, feeling a headache. These words should be big and small, big and small, but the key is still crooked and unsightly. Can't you write well? Wei Furong whispered and then began to look through it. He found that it was all like this, which can prove that Wei Hao copied it himself. Since everything my father has instructed me to do is done, can I leave the mansion today? Wei Hao looked at Wei Furong and asked with a smile. Well, do you all know each other? Wei Furong asked subconsciously. Some don't know each other, Wei Hao answered honestly. I don't know you and still want to go out. What did we say back then? We need to know each other. Wei Furong looked up at Wei Hao and asked. Dad, you're not being reasonable about this. You didn't invite me to be a gentleman, and no one taught me. How can I recognize it? Wei Hao looked at Wei Furong dejectedly and asked. Touch your conscience and say, how many teachers have you run away by yourself? Wei Furong angrily stared at Wei Hao and shouted, saying that he had not hired a teacher for him. But I didn't invite you this time, do you admit it? Wei Hao also stared at Wei Furong and shouted. You, Dad, will invite you later. When do we know each other and when do we go out? Wei Furong said very principled. Dad, I'll go out and take a look this afternoon, can't I? I haven't been out for three days, three days. Wei Hao raised three fingers and said to Wei Furong. Yes, 
Three days. Dad misses these three days. He's much cleaner now. Let him be cleaner for a few more days. Since you were ten years old, Dad hasn't had a peaceful day. Every day, people come to me and tell me that you hit someone and want to lose money. Over these years, your dad and I will at least compensate you 3,000 guan, especially this time, I lost more than a thousand guan. Son, dad has some savings, but if we continue to tinker like you do, our family probably won't need a year and will have to beg. Wei Furong looked at Wei Hao and begged with a pitiful expression. No, don't worry, I will definitely earn this money back for you. Don't worry. Wei Hao said seriously. Upon hearing this, Wei Furong quickly waved his hand and said, this dad really doesn't expect anything. As long as you don't cause trouble for me, you can do it. After getting married, dad will find a good marriage for you. After getting married, he will give birth to a child for me. You, dad really doesn't expect anything anymore. Dad is counting on my grandchildren now. If you can give birth to two grandchildren for me, your credit will be greater than dad's. Ah, the five generations of singles, don't cut it off with you, otherwise dad will kill you. No, don't worry. When I make money, I'll marry a concubine with ten or eight bedrooms and have them work hard to have a polo team for you. But now, you have to let me go. Wei Hao immediately said confidently to Wei Furong. Hee hee, having two makes my dad happy. With so many sisters and only you as a kid, my dad married a concubine with four bedrooms. Wei Furong was quite happy when he heard Wei Hao's words, and then his face changed. He said to Wei Hao, what are you going out for? Are you going to cause trouble again? No, I'm going to make money. Really, after losing so much money to the other party, why should the child give you this money back? Wei Hao smiled and looked at Wei Furong, saying. Humph. Wei Furong listened and hummed silently, completely disbelieving. Dad, I'm serious. Wei Hao emphasized again. Come on, get out of here. Dad will hire you as a teacher this afternoon. Wei Furong didn't even believe that Wei Hao wouldn't cause trouble. He knew his son knew that as long as he went out, it was impossible not to cause trouble. No, Dad. Get back. Wei Furong scolded Wei Hao with a stern face, upon seeing Wei Furong's attitude, Wei Hao estimated that there would be no chance of leaving the mansion, so he returned to his own courtyard. When he arrived at his own courtyard, Wei Hao was still very depressed and wanted to go out for a walk. The master won't let you go out, will he? Steward Wang saw Wei Hao come back with his head down and immediately went over to ask with a smile. Are you rich? Wei Hao stared at manager Wang and asked. Yes, young master still has a lot of pocket money. Manager Wang nodded. Bring some, wait for me outside the fence in the backyard, I'll come over in a moment. Wei Hao's eyes lit up as he immediately said to steward Wang. I still want to surround myself with such a wall. I used to study, but there were many who climbed over the wall. I have been caught by the principal countless times, but I still have to go out anyway. Young master, it's impossible. If the old master knows, it's impossible. Steward Wang immediately said anxiously when he heard that Wei Hao was going to break through the wall and leave the mansion. Steward Wang, it's okay. If you're afraid my father will offend you, you'll just pretend to know nothing and stay at the mansion. But if I leave the mansion alone and cause any trouble, it's not guaranteed. Wei Hao stroked his sleeve and said nonchalantly, his tone full of threat. Young master, this, said Steward Wang, this fool can still leave the mansion alone. Wei Hao took manager Wang and began to explore Chang'an City. TSK Tisk, it's so shabby, it's not as exquisite as I imagined. Wei Hao looked at the houses along the street with his hands behind his back, feeling very ordinary, completely different from his impression of Chang'an. Young master, the truly beautiful place is in the East City. Those who live there are all high dot ranking officials, or they are nobles. Manager Wang explained to Wei Hao. 
then go to the East City and have a look. Wei Hao immediately said with interest. It's a bit far, we need to hire a carriage, said the steward Wang. Hire. Wei Hao said without hesitation, his family is wealthy, and his father is wealthy. When he arrived in the East City, Wei Hao realized that the houses here were completely different from those in the West City. The houses in the East City were exquisite, but the key was that they were very spacious, and the square was larger than that in the West City. See, these are all the mansions of the Duke of China. The houses of those officials are still inside, even further away, and not so big. Steward Wang introduced to Wei Hao. We also need to live in such a house. Hey, let me ask you, when it comes to wealth, how about comparing my father to those officials? Wei Hao said as he looked at manager Wang. This can't be compared, the mansion can't even compare to a single hair from a family, a government official. Steward Wang looked at Wei Hao and said. Is Duke Gua so wealthy? Wei Hao was shocked and said, Duke Gua is so wealthy. Young master, this is not a matter of money, it's someone else's money. No one dares to take it, but the money of the master. Well, just a small official can deceive the master a lot. The master has made money, but I don't know how much filial piety he has given in recent years. Not to mention anything else, let's just talk about the Wei family. The master hands over 200 guan of money to the Wei family every year, claiming to support ethnic studies. In fact, everyone knows that the family bullies the master, a non-official branch, and the master is still wealthy, so they openly demand it. Oh! How dare you blackmail money like this! Wei Hao finally understood. Whose carriage, get out of the way! At this moment, a group of soldiers came forward and shouted to Wei Hao's side. The coachman quickly drove the carriage aside, stopped, and then saw a very luxurious carriage coming from a distance, accompanied by a large number of palace maids and guards. What kind of person's carriage is this? Wei Hao looked out with his head. At this moment, a woman wearing a golden crown probe inside the carriage lifted the curtain and exchanged a glance with Wei Hao. Wei Hao stared into the woman's eyes. It's a princess, young master. Don't rush into the princess, said the steward Wang, as he looked at the ceremonial guards and immediately reminded Wei Hao, subconsciously pulling him back. Hu and Wei Hao whistled at the woman on the carriage, and waved provocatively towards the distance. The woman saw it and glared fiercely at Wei Hao, who then burst into laughter. Steward Wang, this girl is beautiful and has temperament. Let's see if there's a chance to soak her up, Wei Hao said with a smile to Steward Wang. Young master, he's a princess. The Steward Wang was so anxious that he was so frivolous towards the princess. How could this cause trouble? What's wrong with the princess? She won't get married anymore. Who's not married? Wei Hao said nonchalantly, continuing to look at the distant carriage and realizing that the woman had already lowered the curtain and couldn't see it anymore. Quickly, the princess's convoy left, while Wei Hao continued to stroll through the east city, gazing at the scenery on this side. When he arrived at the market in the east city, Wei Hao found that it was completely different from the market in the west city. There were many ordinary people in the market in the West City, and the market here was bustling with young gentlemen, wealthy ladies from various mansions, and maids. My dad is so foolish. It's easy to make money here. These people don't need money. How much money can they make in the West City? Wei Hao sat there, already in love with this place. Young master, the shops here are expensive. Just like this street-facing shop, the annual rent costs several tens of guan. Manager Wang immediately pointed to a small shop on the street, estimated to be 20.30 square meters. So expensive. What about such a restaurant? Wei Hao pointed to a nearby restaurant and asked. This kind of restaurant can't be bought without 500 guan in a year. Manager Wang continued. Let's go eat and see what's the difference between the restaurants in the East City and the West City. Wei Hao said as he was about to get off the car and it was time for dinner. 
Upon hearing Wei Hao's words, Steward Wong got off the carriage and the two of them entered the restaurant. End of this chapter. Chapter 4 Crazy Dad You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4 Crazy Dad After Wei Hao entered the restaurant, he found that there were many people here. Judging from their clothing and attire, they were all wealthy owners, unlike the restaurants in the western city where all kinds of people were present. Wei Hao went in and ordered four specialty dishes. But after waiting for the four specialty dishes to come, Wei Hao was very disappointed. There was no taste at all, and the ingredients were all good, but the taste was not good. However, this kind of dish cost Wei Hao 101, which made manager Wang very distressed. Young master, the food here is not much better than our previous restaurant. This kind of food, even though it costs 31 at our restaurant, costs over 100 won here. Steward Wang said to Wei Hao with great concern. Wei Hao nodded thoughtfully, then smiled and said, What do you know? This is how to make money. Look, young master, I will open a restaurant here and guarantee that it will be the best business in the entire Tang dynasty. Manager Wang heard about it and didn't make any comments. Anyway, bragging is not illegal. When Wei Hao was still five years old, he followed him and didn't know what skills he had. Let's go home and ask my father for money, Wei Hao smiled and waved to Steward Wang before getting into the carriage. At Wei Hao's house, Wei Furong couldn't even eat his angry meal. In the afternoon, he finally begged a teacher to come and teach Wei Hao at home. They came, but Wei Hao was not in the yard. Since he had climbed over the wall and ran away. The teacher had heard of Wei Hao's reputation before and knew that he was not easy to teach. He had beaten many teachers away, but now that he had climbed over the wall and ran away, the teacher thought that teaching here would definitely be difficult in the future, so he said goodbye and didn't teach anything. Master, the young master is back. Just as Wei Hao got off the carriage, a servant went to inform Wei Furong. Wei Furong angrily manipulated the vine that had been placed on the table before, preparing to go and smoke Wei Hao. Dad, you're at home. I happen to have something to tell you. Wei Hao saw Wei Furong come out of the living room and was happy. He didn't have to look for him everywhere, but when he saw the vine in his hand and his angry face, which had already turned black, Wei Hao had a premonition that things were not going well. He turned around and started running. Fool, stop me. I can't kill you, how dare I even climb over the wall. Wei Furong saw Wei Hao run away and chased after him, shouting at him as he chased after him. Wei Hao never stopped, only a fool would stop. After running for a while, Wei Hao found that Wei Furong was still chasing him, as if he was unwilling to hit Wei Hao. Dad, you're fat. It's not good to exercise vigorously like this. Is there anything we can stop and talk about? Wei Hao ran for a while, stopped, and waited for Wei Furong to catch up. You, stop me. Wei Furong pointed at Wei Hao and said out of breath. Okay, I'll stop and give you a chance. As he was about to reach Wei Hao's side, he accelerated again and ran behind Wei Furong. Don't run. Wei Furong continued to chase after him. Dad, what are you doing? Don't chase after me, it's just your body, chubby. Wei Hao stood behind and said to Wei Furong. At this moment, Wei Furong was extremely angry, but he couldn't catch up. Unable to do anything, Wei Furong could only stop and pointed his cane at Wei Hao, saying, You bastard, I told you not to go out. You dare to climb over the wall and leave the mansion. The teacher came this afternoon, and when he saw that you were not at home, he was angry and left. You. What you said, I can go out after copying it. If you don't keep your word, blame me. Wei Hao immediately retorted. Where are the characters, do you recognize them? Wei Furong angrily shouted at Wei Hao. Dad, if I can copy it, it's good. Don't demand so much, okay? You tell me, have I copied so much before? 
Wei Hao asked Wei Furong, and this was also what manager Wang told him. It was difficult for him to copy even a sentence before. Hmm. Wei Furong heard it and didn't know what to say. I've already made concessions, can't you let me down? I've already copied a book. Can you ask those people in my yard if I copied word by word? I'm working so hard, I can't go out for a walk. Besides, can you ask manager Wang if I went out today and caused any trouble? Wei Hao said, pointing to the anxious manager Wang in the distance. Upon hearing this, Wei Furong turned his head and stared at manager Wang. Master, the young master really didn't cause any trouble this time, steward Wang quickly said, thinking to himself that teasing the princess and whistling shouldn't be considered, after all, they won't come knocking on her door. Okay, okay, let me spare you this time. Starting from tomorrow, you're not allowed to leave the mansion. Wei Furong pointed a vine at Wei Hao and warned. There's no way, we can't catch up, we can't hit, we can only follow the steps down, otherwise it would be very embarrassing. That's not possible, Dad. I have something to discuss with you. I went around today to find a way to make money. I lost so much money to my family before, and I feel guilty. I'll make it back for you this time, no matter what I say. Wei Hao immediately shook his head and said. Upon hearing this, Wei Furong rolled his eyes and prepared to go back with the vine in hand. As for the way Wei Hao talked about making money, Wei Furong would never believe it even if he died. Hey, Dad, don't you leave. Wei Hao saw Wei Furong leave like this and immediately followed him. Get away. Wei Furong glared fiercely at Wei Hao and said. Are you listening to me finish? Wei Hao continued to chase after him and shout. Wei Furong raised the vine in his hand, and Wei Hao immediately stood still. It was only then that he remembered that he still had the vine in his hand. At this moment, there was a possibility of being pulled, so it was safer to stay away. Wei Hao followed Wei Furong to the living room. Wei Furong sat in the middle of the living room, while Wei Hao leaned against the door. Dad, let me tell you, the people in Dongqing are all stupid and have a lot of money. A terrible meal costs over 100 won, and it's so easy to earn such money. I guarantee that if we open a restaurant over there, we will definitely make money, and it will be big money. Wei Hao leaned back, trying to persuade Wei Furong, but Wei Furong seemed to not want to talk to him. Dad, your vision is too bad. You only want to open a restaurant in the West City. How much money can you make? Wei Hao wanted to provoke Wei Furong and speak, but could only look down on him first. What do you know? The restaurants in Dongqing are so easy to open. There are no less than ten restaurants opening in Dongqing every year, and no more than one can survive for a year. The rent in Dongqing is so expensive, and if you want to sign a lease, you have to sign a one-year lease. If you lose money, you will have to fall into your own hands. Besides, there is no one behind the East City. If someone causes trouble in the tavern, you won't be able to quell it. You might end up risking your life. Previously, Wang Yuanwei from the West City opened a tavern in the East City, which caused trouble for the people in the Zhao Duke's mansion. The whole family is in ruins, so please don't cause trouble for your father. Get away from me, don't provoke me. I don't know what I've done in my life. I gave birth to such a thing as you. Wei Furong shouted angrily at Wei Hao. There's no way, this is the only son in the family. If there's one more, I'll strangle Wei Hao myself. Then lend me six hundred guan of money. Wei Hao persisted and said to Wei Furong, who was too lazy to listen. Dad, if you don't give it to me, I'll go to Wei Tsong's house tomorrow and ask for his money. If he doesn't give it to me, I'll continue to beat him up and you'll have to pay a lot of money later. Wei Hao remained unmoved and immediately threatened Wei Furong. Upon hearing this, Wei Furong immediately picked up the vines on the table and wanted to catch up. Wei Hao quickly ran and shouted, Dad, if you don't give me money, I'll go find Wei Tsong tomorrow to ask for money. If I don't give it to you, 
I'll beat him. Are you willing to give him that money, or are you willing to give it to me? Oh my goodness, why did I give birth to such a thing? Wei Furon was so sad. This kid is just a disaster. The disaster is that our family doesn't have enough money, and we still have to continue the disaster. When will this be the end? Wei Furong stopped chasing at this moment and sat on a stone bench, feeling extremely sad. Wei Hao stood still from a distance when he saw how sad he was. After thinking for a moment, he said to Wei Furong, Dad, can't you trust me once? As long as you trust me, I promise not to fight for a month. I won't fight anyone who hits me. After listening, Wei Furong turned his head to look at Wei Hao. How about it? According to what you said, I have to lose a lot of money every month when I fight. I promise you not to cause trouble for a month, and you give me the money. Wei Hao saw Wei Furong staring at him and said again. You're a spendthrift, this family will be defeated by you sooner or later, Wei Furong pointed at Wei Hao and cursed. Wei Hao is not cunning either. There is nothing he can do. He was indeed a bit of a spendthrift before, but he is not the same Wei Hao as before. However, in this case, he cannot tell Wei Furong that the key now is to ask for money. Wei Furong stood up at this moment, holding a rattan. He was hunched a lot, and Wei Hao felt a bit reluctant to see it, but making money was a big deal. Dad, can it be a sentence? If you don't believe the child, the child will think of another way. Wei Hao shouted at Wei Furong's back. What can you do, go grab it. Wei Furong turned his head and shouted fiercely at Wei Hao. That won't happen, Dad. Don't worry, I won't do anything that violates the law. Wei Hao immediately shook his head and said. Oh, it's just that. If you lose, then you lose. Wei Furong has done so many good things in his life, and when the time comes, he will end up with a ruined family. Oh my goodness. Wei Furong looked up at the sky and sighed. Thank you dad, don't worry, you won't lose money. Wei Hao agreed upon hearing Wei Furong's tone and immediately thanked him. Although Wei Furong's tone was disheartened and melancholic, Wei Hao didn't have to worry too much. As a fool in his heart, he couldn't change it for a while, but he did need to change. End of this chapter Chapter 5 Spending Money to Buy Cleanliness You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Spending Money to Buy Cleanliness Wei Furong took out the money in great pain, and he also accepted his fate. With such a son on the table, who has a way? If you don't pay, go beat someone up and make me lose money. In the following days, Wei Hao went to the East City to open a shop, selected some servants from home to clean, and then invited some carpenters to decorate it. At the same time, he also invited carpenters to come to his home, bought a lot of wood, and asked them to make seats, then Wei Hao wanted his father to buy iron. At this time, iron was in the official camp and it was difficult to buy. Most of the iron was used to make weapons. Buy iron, 100 pounds, what do you want? Wei Furong looked at his son cautiously and asked. Making things. Wei Hao looked at Wei Furong in confusion and asked, not knowing why he was so vigilant in looking at himself. Are we going to make weapons, to be honest? Wei Furong stared at Wei Hao and continued to question. What's the point of making weapons? It's not like we're going to war anymore. Besides, it's not my turn to fight, is it? Wei Hao looked at the old man puzzled, wondering why he didn't believe him so much. No, we need to explain clearly what we need to do. If you make weapons and go kill people then, won't it be over? Oh my, we still have some money in our family, so we shouldn't go grab it, you know. Even worse, we still have hundreds of acres of fertile land at home. Wei Furong looked at Wei Hao earnestly and advised him. Although this son is very poor, he is also Wei Furong's only child. You can tell me if you're going to buy it or not. If I can buy it, I'll go by myself. Besides, I haven't had a fight these days. 
I've kept my word. Wei Hao didn't want to answer Wei Furong's question. Wei Hao wanted to make a pot, but Tang Dynasty didn't have this kind of frying pan. If I told Wei Furong, I don't know how many times I need to explain, so I'm too lazy to explain. Hey, come over tonight to pick it up. Wei Furong felt helpless, thinking that he had already given the money, so let's buy the iron. However, what Wei Hao just said also makes sense. In the past few days, no one has come to his door to say that his son has been fighting. With such an effect, Wei Furong feels very satisfied, at least there is no need to worry. In the evening, the pig iron returned, and Wei Hao asked the blacksmith to make some pots for him, as well as some utensils for making hot pot. Anyway, they were all used to make various pots. At the same time, Wei Hao was mixing things in his study. About half a month later, the restaurant was decorated, and the tables and chairs were moved over. The pots were also prepared, and some of the prepared ingredients were also prepared by Wei Hao. It was just a matter of the cook. This cook is not easy to deal with. People outside are afraid to look for him because there are still some things that need to be kept confidential, and he can only use his family's cook. Those chefs also don't know how to stir fry, and he needs Wei Hao's guidance. Who cooked the food today, why is it so unpleasant? Wei Furong sat in the living room eating, feeling that the food today was simply hard to swallow. Master, all the cooks at home have been called over by the young master these days, and the rest are not very good at cooking. In the next few days, I will go to the village to find some suitable cooks. The butler Lu, who was in charge of the mansion, immediately came over and said to Wei Furong. That stinky kid called all the cooks at home. Is there something wrong with him? Isn't there a cook hired outside? Wei Furong put down his chopsticks and said unhappily. Well, we can't understand what the young master is doing, but master, he hasn't fought during this time, Lu Butler immediately advised Wei Furong. That's the master. I spent 600 guan to buy a month's worth of cleanliness, Wei Furong said helplessly. Upon hearing this, the butler Lu chuckled lightly, and Wei Furong looked at the butler with displeasure. Master, at least for over half a month, the young master has not caused any trouble, has he? It's not bad either. I think the young master is also focused on doing things. During this period, he only comes back before curfew every day and goes out before dawn. The young master is still good. Lu Butler smiled and said to Wei Furong. I haven't been at home every day for over half a month, and besides asking my master to handle things, I can't find anyone else. Wei Furong was very dissatisfied and then stood up, saying, I won't eat anymore. Let's go eat outside. How can I swallow these dishes? As he spoke, he walked outside with his hands behind his back, and the butler followed suit. On the other hand, in the restaurant, Wei Hao taught them how to stir-fry and stew soup hand in hand. In recent days, he only cooked three dishes a day to teach them how to waste a lot of ingredients, but the taste of the dishes he made was still very good. In addition, Wei Hao also set up a barbecue fireplace in the kitchen, specifically for making roast duck and pigeons, which he hired three servants to do. Young master, try this dish, Gong Pao Ji Ding. After the kitchen stir fried the dishes, it was brought over to Wei Hao to taste. Wei Hao picked it up with his chopsticks and tasted it. Well, it's not bad. It's about seven or eight minutes hot, and we need to continue working hard. Wei Hao nodded and said to the chef. Thank you, young master. I'll keep working hard. The chef was overjoyed when he heard Wei Hao's words. Now, each of them needs to master the dishes taught by Wei Hao. This is a skill that they are all working hard to learn. In the blink of an eye, it was five days, and those chefs had almost mastered it. Wei Hao thought it was time to open the business, so he decided to open it in two days. Young master, it's about to open. Do you want to invite some people to come and have a lively atmosphere? Asked the steward Wang, who was following Wei Hao as he looked at him. Who should I invite? 
Wei Hao looked at Steward Wang in confusion. When he arrived at the Tang Dynasty, he didn't even know a few people. How do you know about this? You have to ask the master, said Manager Wang for a moment before reminding Wei Hao. Can you pull it down? Let's talk to my dad. He thought I would embarrass him. If I don't invite him, we'll just open the business like this. What we do is reputation, and we need to keep every guest who comes in. Tomorrow, we'll get some flower baskets at the door, put red paper on the door, and write that it's open. Don't worry about anything else, take it slow. Anyway, the aroma of wine doesn't fear the depth of the alley. We're in this bustling street, and we're not afraid no one comes in to eat. Wei Hao waved his hand and said to Manager Wang. Steward Wang heard this and thought for a moment before nodding. Anyway, it was Wei Hao who was in charge. If it didn't succeed, it was also Wei Hao's fault and had nothing to do with him. There is also a restaurant opposite Wei Hao Restaurant, which is very large and covers an area approximately three times that of Wei Hao Restaurant. Jushin Tower It has been renovated for so long, but there hasn't been any movement. The restaurant owner stood at the door, looking at the tightly closed Jushin Tower, which is the restaurant opened by Wei Hao, and sneered. Shopkeeper, I heard it was driven by a man named Han Zi from the West City. He used to fight in the West City, but his father's name was Wei Furong, a branch of the Wei family. He had a few coins in his hands, but he didn't expect to give it to such a foolish son to become a black sheep. A servant next to him smiled and said to the long shopkeeper. Humph, what's wrong with the Wei family? The Wei family can still compete with our royal family. Our restaurant, but for the royal family, do you think the person across from us is the second fool? The shopkeeper snorted coldly and said disdainfully. Yes, Iranzi. He used to fight outside every day, and his father Wei Furong didn't know how much he had lost out. I don't know what happened this time. He even dared to use the money to open a restaurant for this fool. The West City side has been discussing this matter, waiting to see a joke. The servant continued to smile and said to the shopkeeper. The shopkeeper sneered again upon hearing this, then turned around and walked in. The servant quickly followed suit. Tell them to work harder. In a few days, the royal side may need to send someone to inspect. Also, notify the accountant to prepare those accounts, the shopkeeper said with a glance at the servant beside him. Upon hearing this, the servant immediately smiled and nodded before giving orders. Two days later, the Jushian building opened. Where are the firecrackers, don't they? Wei Hao stood at the door and asked the servant who was following him. Young master, firecrackers. The servant looked at Wei Hao puzzled. After lighting it up, it was so festive that there were no firecrackers prepared for such a big opening event. Wei Hao shouted angrily at the servant. Young master, no, I haven't heard of this before. Steward Wang stood behind Wei Hao and looked at him in embarrassment, saying. No. Wei Hao was surprised to hear that gunpowder had already been invented, hadn't it? Surprisingly, it wasn't used to make firecrackers. And Manager Wang continued to shake his head. That's okay, but it's just so quiet and quiet, isn't there any movement? Wei Hao waved his hand and then touched his head, feeling very depressed as he said. There was no movement, who knew your house had opened? Young master, what kind of movement do you want? You can't let me invite a few performers to come over and sing at the door, can you? Steward Wang looked carefully at Wei Hao and asked. Upon hearing this, Wei Hao's eyes lit up and he patted Manager Wang's shoulder, saying, Old Wang, you're still smart. End of this chapter. 6. Chapter 6 Finds You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 Finds, Dong Dong, Dong Dong, Dong Dong, Dong Dong In no time, drums, swona, gongs, and other sounds came from the street, and then someone was heard singing babbling. What is this? It's noisy. What's going on? It's so noisy. 
are you still singing? The voices rang out, and all the people who were shopping stared here, quickly finding Wei Hao's Jushin building. Hey everyone, this restaurant is a restaurant that opened today with a 20% discount. If you want to have a meal, go inside and try it. It's not that I'm bragging. Our restaurant is absolutely unique in Chang'an, but it's a bit expensive. Before you go in, feel if your wallet is enough. If it's not enough, don't come in, save trouble. Wei Hao saw so many people gathered around here and immediately stood on the steps, bowing and smiling at them. Where did you come from, fool? I don't know if we need silence here. Why hasn't the patrol arrived yet? A young master smiled and looked at Wei Hao's side, saying. Is there enough money to repay? Is there anyone doing business like this? What about black shops? Can we steal money? This kid looks young, probably some wealthy young master came here to have fun. If you come here to open a restaurant, it will be light if someone smashes you. Those who are shopping here have all started laughing and discussing. Every year, there are people opening restaurants here, but I don't know how deep the water on this street is. It's a big disaster, with some going bankrupt and others going bankrupt. It's a common occurrence here, and those who can establish themselves here are those who have power behind them. Don't miss it as you pass by. The restaurant is offering a big reward today, with a 20% discount. If you're hungry, come in and give a face, I promise you won't regret it. Wei Hao continued to smile and bow at those people. At this moment, a group of guards came over and it looked like the Imperial Guard. Stop, stop, no blowing, no knocking, who's the shopkeeper? A leader asked the people to stop and continued shouting. Hey, Junyi, Junyi, I. I'm the shopkeeper. What's wrong? Don't we let this happen? Wei Hao smiled and asked the leader with a smile. Of course, you can't boast. The people who come here to eat are all young masters and ladies from various prefectures, even officials and nobles. What's wrong with your noisy behavior like this? You'll be fine too Guan, and next time it's like this, your shop will be closed. The leader shouted to Wei Hao. What's that? Two Guan coins, why don't you go grab them? Now Wei Hao knows how much two Guan coins there are, basically enough to pay half a month's wages for the entire restaurant. He just opened his mouth and demanded two Guan coins, which he hasn't earned yet. Moreover, he just opened today and will be fined. It's so unlucky. What are you saying? Hey, Junyi, Junyi, let's acknowledge the punishment, acknowledge the punishment, come here, take two guan of money, hurry up, young master, go back, go back. Steward Wang rushed over at this moment, pulling Wei Hao's eyes and constantly giving him a signal. Don't be impulsive. No. Wei Hao still wanted to argue. Young master, you promised the master not to fight for a month. Steward Wang quickly said to Wei Hao. Wei Hao was so angry that he had to turn around and enter. Thinking about it, he felt unlucky that someone had extorted two guan of money. Quickly, the outside was clean and the people invited were also paid by manager Wang to leave. The restaurant across from him was called Jingda Tower, and the shopkeeper sat outside, looking at Wei Hao with a smile. He had thought that the opening of Jushin Tower might affect the business of this restaurant, but on the first day, he was fined. Thinking about it, he felt happy. Shopkeeper, I'll just say that the person across from me is a fool. There's no one who has opened a business and made such a show, and even invited someone to sing. It's just amazing. The servant next to him covered his mouth and smiled at the shopkeeper. It's understandable that people from the countryside don't understand the rules here, the shopkeeper said with a smile, with a hint of mockery in his tone, while Wei Hao sat in the restaurant, furious. It's small, it's not. I didn't inquire about the rules here, otherwise I wouldn't have let the young master suffer such anger. Steward Wang arrived at Wei Hao's side at this moment and advised him. It's okay, I asked for two guan of money at once, and it hurts to think about it. 
Wei Hao said angrily. He didn't have much money now, and he had spent almost all 600 guan. Then Wei Hao could only wait. It was almost noon and no one came in. The servants were anxiously looking in the direction of the door, hoping that someone would come in, but still no one came. Sitting here, you can see that the business of the restaurant across from you is very good, and many people come in to eat. Young master, what should we do now? Steward Wang came over to look at Wei Hao and asked. What can we do? Wait, our food is delicious anyway, what are we afraid of? Wei Hao sat there, gritting his teeth and saying, not believing that no one came to eat. At this moment, a group of four young masters walked in. The newly opened restaurant. The young master at the head had an extraordinary demeanor, and he wore a sword on his waist. The three young masters behind him also looked very dignified. Hey, guest, please come inside. Wei Hao saw that the guest had arrived and immediately stood up to welcome him. Well, the decoration is quite good, and these seats are quite novel. Well, they're good, I've put a lot of effort into it, the leading young master said with a smile. Thank you for your praise. My store not only has a good environment, but also has a good taste. In terms of price, it's 30% more expensive than other restaurants. However, my guest, rest assured that you will feel the value for money after trying it. Wei Hao explained with a smile. Oh. Dare to say that. Okay, then try it. Money is not a problem said a young master behind with a smile. Please come inside and take the private room. The private room fee is waived. As the first customer of our store, the private room fee is waived. Wei Hao laughed and shouted. Those young masters heard it and laughed, feeling that Wei Hao's words were very interesting. Quickly, they went up to the private room upstairs, where someone specifically handed over tea and others brought cooked peanuts and so on. Then they started ordering dishes that they had never heard of before, and those few people only ordered a few expensive ones. In no time, the dishes were served, and the young masters looked at the dishes in surprise. They had never seen such a dish before. Today at this restaurant, this food is unheard of and unheard of. Try it, one of the people asked. Try it. The other people also nodded. Well, the taste is good, delicious. It's really nice. It's my first time eating this kind of food. It's the best food. Those previous restaurants didn't even deserve to bring shoes to this shop. Mmm, hmm, delicious. A few people are all nodding their heads while eating. These days, they have never eaten stir-fried food at all. Most of the dishes in the Tang Dynasty are cooked or grilled. Dear guest, thank you for supporting us. This is roast duck, a special dish from our shopkeeper. I enjoyed the meal and remember to introduce a friend to come and try it. Steward Wong personally brought a plate of roast duck into the private room and said with a smiling face to the people inside. Okay, with a heart, these dishes are really good. This restaurant is expected to have good business, the leading young master said to manager Wong with a smile. I borrow your auspicious words, please use them slowly. Steward Wong was pleased to hear him say so and then withdrew. And downstairs, two tables of guests also came, both of whom had no seats across from each other. They came here, and the people who could eat on the other side were not short of money. When the dishes were served, they were all shocked, and when they ate, the taste was even more impressive. They all praised the dishes. At the end of the checkout, those guests also paid very happily, especially the first table guests, who were quite satisfied. Shopkeeper, the dishes are good and I'll come over when I have time, the leader smiled and said to Wei Hao. All right, that's all for you. In the future, as long as you come to eat, you will receive a 10% discount. Come, leave a name, and in the future, as long as you give your name, this will be a 10% discount. Wei Hao smiled and handed over a piece of paper and a brush. Huh, okay. 
The young master felt very proud when he heard Wei Hao say this, and smiled before leaving his own name. Li Gao Ming, a good name. He is very clever in doing things. Wei Hao looked at the name and immediately praised it with a smile. Then the few people were about to leave, and Wei Hao smiled and escorted them to the door. At noon, there were only five tables in total and we did business for less than 500 won. The main reason was that Wei Hao was generous, not to mention a 20% discount, and even offered food as gifts. Therefore, we didn't actually make any money from this lunch. However, what made Wei Hao happy was that those customers said they were delicious and would come again. That's what Wei Hao liked. In the evening, there were a few more tables for the guests, and what pleased Wei Hao the most was that there were several familiar dishes, all of which had come after noon. This made Wei Hao very happy and he once again specially sent them two dishes. In no time, Li Gaoming came over with seven or eight young masters. Oh, the young master is here. Please go upstairs. Wei Hao was very happy when he saw Li Gaoming and brought so many people over. He immediately welcomed him and said. Today I'll treat you alone, with good food and wine. Li Gaoming smiled and said to Wei Hao. Don't worry, young master. I guarantee you will have a happy meal, Wei Hao said with a smile as he led the way. Originally, for an ordinary guest, Wei Hao would sit there motionless, but this Li Gaoming is clearly different. The clothes he wears and the attire of the people he brings are not something that ordinary people can afford. It is obvious that they are children of wealthy families. Wei Hao likes such guests the most, and they are not short of money. Big brother, this restaurant just opened, is it okay, a chubby man asked Li Gao Ming. You'll know later, the food in this restaurant is really good, Li Gao Ming said with a smile. Don't worry, my guest. If you are not satisfied with any dish, let me know and I promise to exchange it for you. Wei Hao smiled and said to the chubby little man. End of this chapter. Chapter 7 First Meeting you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 7 First Meeting Li Gaoming led those guests up to the private room on the second floor, which was decorated very well, especially the large round table, which they had never seen before. They were very satisfied with the environment and the people Li Gaoming brought. After waiting for the dishes to be served, those people tasted them and were extremely satisfied. They also added several dishes afterwards, which was very satisfying. When settling the accounts, it was originally 600 won, but Li Gaoming directly gave him the usual money. Wei Hao was quite happy when he offered a reward. When I was doing the accounting tonight, today's income was actually 4 guan. Excluding the cost, I earned at least 2 guan. Take a look, take a look, I'll say, if you drive here, you must make money. Just like today, not many people have made 2 guan of money. When our business is good, we don't know how much we will make. Wei Hao patted the table and said happily. Steward Wang was also extremely happy and quickly called him by the side. The next noon, there were more and more people. In one afternoon, we did about ten tables of business, but in the evening, the business was even better, with twelve tables. On the third day, business improved and many people also knew that the food in this restaurant was expensive, but it was really delicious, a taste they had never tasted before. In the next few days, business will become increasingly popular. There are two floors in Jushin building, with 30 tables on the first floor and 15 private rooms on the second floor, all of which are basically fully booked. Later on, someone had already come to make a reservation in advance, which made Wei Hao quite happy. Why is it that in just a few days, the restaurant across from us is full of guests, while we have very few guests here? At this moment, in Jingda Tower, a young woman with two maids began questioning the shopkeeper of Jingda Tower. To answer the princess's question, this restaurant was opened only a few days ago. The opening of this restaurant has had a huge impact on us. A few days ago, we didn't realize it. Just these past few days, many guests have gone to the opposite side, saying that the food there is better. 
However, no matter how good it is, is that all? The best cooks in Chang'an City have been hired by us. Don't worry, Royal Highness Princess, those guests are just fresh. It is estimated that our guests will come back in a few days. The shopkeeper spoke to the woman. The woman is Li Lizzy, the eldest princess of the Tang dynasty, and this restaurant is owned by the royal family. The royal family not only refers to those princesses and nobles, but also many members of the royal family. The expenses of the royal family also need to be paid by the emperor. It is definitely not possible to rely solely on the court to support them, so the royal family will also do some business to make up for the expenses. Of course, these businesses are all managed by the empress, but she is going to have a child soon, so these affairs are entrusted to Princess Li Lizzy for management. That's good. I'll take a look in half a month. The profit of this restaurant has reached 300 guan per month, which can make up for some of the shortfall in internal funds. If the profit here decreases, the mother will be angry. You'll know the consequences then, Li Lizzy said coldly as she looked at the shopkeeper. Yes, yes, I know. Please rest assured, Princess Chang. There must be no problem, the shopkeeper immediately nodded and bowed. You know that's best. Li Lizzy said and went out with the maid. Just as I left, I saw many people coming and going across from me. After considering it for a moment, I walked straight inside the Jushin building. Welcome a few ladies, please come inside. Do you want a private room or sit on the first floor? The servant who greeted me at the door saw several girls coming over and immediately welcomed them and said. Li Lizzy, on the other hand, stood there with a frown because standing at the door, she couldn't even see the guests inside. Wei Hao designed it very well, and when she came in, she would face the counter directly. If she wanted to eat, she needed to spare some time and enter the two halls on the first floor, or in other words, go straight to the second floor. Mm, private room. Li Lizzy nodded and walked inside. As she walked, she saw Wei Hao holding a brush in his mouth, looking at things with a familiar look. And Wei Hao also noticed that someone was looking at him. Turning his head, he also saw Li Lizzy. Oh. Wei Hao looked at her and was amazed, and he also felt familiar with her face. Humph. Li Lizzy was a bit dissatisfied when she saw Wei Hao looking at her like this. She snorted coldly and prepared to go upstairs. Beautiful, so beautiful. Wei Hao exclaimed in admiration, then couldn't help but whistle. Li Lizzy was shocked when she heard this and then turned her head to look at Wei Hao. Dang Tuzi. She said and fiercely gouged out Wei Hao. She had already remembered where she had seen this person, but Wei Hao did not remember. TSK TSK TSK, Steward Wang, have you seen that girl? She's pretty, isn't she? Go, inquire, see whose girl it is from, and ask my father to propose marriage. Wei Hao smiled at Steward Wang and said. Upon hearing this, Steward Wang smiled bitterly. Looking at his attire, he was not from an ordinary family. There were very few ordinary families who came here to eat, even if they were not better than Wei Hao's family, they would definitely not be much worse than Wei Hao's family. And my own young master, that's a famous fool. When they send someone to the West City to inquire, can there still be a play? What expression? Young master, I am dignified and talented, don't I deserve her? Ask her. Go ahead. Wei Hao saw Steward Wang with a bitter expression on his face and immediately said to him in dissatisfaction. Young master, they are here to eat. It's not appropriate to inquire about the girl's family affairs like this, isn't it? Steward Wang reminded Wei Hao with a kind and tearful face. What are your own virtues? Don't you have any points in mind? I won't go and scold. Wei Hao looked at him disdainfully and then said to the others, All right. I'll personally serve this table of guests, young master. As he spoke, he went up and arrived at Li Lizzy's private room. Wei Hao smiled and pushed the door in. A few guests, what would you like to eat? 
Wei Hao stood beside Li Lizzie with a smile, staring at her. It was so beautiful, but the key was her temperament, which was very quiet, but also had a bit of self-restraint and dignity. Li Lizzie heard the sound and turned her head to see that it was Wei Hao. Her face couldn't help but darken. Miss, is it your first time coming to this restaurant? Do you want me to recommend some of our dishes to you? Wei Hao continued to smile as he looked at Li Lizzie and asked. Are you the shopkeeper? Li Lizzie spoke, her voice making Wei Hao intoxicated and pleasant. Yes, what's the order? Wei Hao continued with a smile. Give up a few of your specialty dishes if they taste good. If they don't taste good, shut down your shop. Li Lizzie stared at Wei Hao and said discontentedly. What's going on? Sealing my shop. Sister, we have no grievances or grudges. You can't do this, at least you need to be reasonable, right? You're so good that looking, how could you do such a thing? This doesn't match your beauty, Wei Hao said seriously as he looked at Li Lizzie. Get out and serve the dishes. Li Lizzie scolded Wei Hao. Okay, I'm sure you're satisfied. Wei Hao saw that she was unhappy and smiled as he went out. Anyway, she was his own customer, and the customer's requirements were met. After Wei Hao went out, he arranged a few good dishes, and then when the people below brought them over, Wei Hao personally brought them in. This is roast duck, our specialty dish, which other restaurants don't have. Try it. If it's not delicious, it's free. Wei Hao said and placed it in the middle of the table. Li Lizzie gave Wei Hao a glance, and Wei Hao smiled and went out. And a maid next to her immediately picked up chopsticks, picked them up, and placed them in Li Lizzie's small plate. Li Lizzie picked them up and tasted them. Hmm. Li Lizzie fell in love with this taste after taking the first bite. More, the maid next to her asked. Well, I want that skin, it's delicious, Li Lizzie nodded and said to the maid. The maid quickly handed over the roasted golden duck skin, and Li Lizzie quickly picked it up to eat. That's really good. Li Lizzie nodded in appreciation. Continuing with the other dishes, Li Lizzie was very satisfied with each dish. Compared to the dishes she had eaten before, they were not called dishes anymore. These dishes not only looked good, but also had a unique taste. After a few people finished eating, Li Lizzie wiped her mouth with a towel, thinking to herself, no wonder so many people came to visit. This shop is probably not going to collapse, and the royal storefront, located opposite, is likely to be greatly affected. Go call the shopkeeper and have his boss come to see me, Li Lizzie sat there and said. Immediately, a maid stood up and went out, only to find Wei Hao sitting there, writing with a brush. Shopkeeper. Our young lady wants to find your boss. The maid came out and said to Wei Hao. I am, what's going on? Wei Hao asked with a smile. Is that you? Then come in. The maid looked at Wei Hao, a bit incredulous, but still took him and went. Miss, he said he's the boss. The maid came in and said to Li Lizzie. After Wei Hao came in, Li Lizzie looked at him. Hee hee, do you have any instructions? Wei Hao stood there laughing. Your food is indeed very good. Do you think the owner is you? Who is your father? Li Lizzie looked at Wei Hao and asked. My father, you must have heard of it before. My father is Wei Furong from Shichun. Wei Hao said arrogantly upon hearing this. Oh, I haven't heard of it, Li Lizzie exclaimed, and then said calmly, I haven't heard of it. At this moment, Wei Hao seemed a bit awkward. This girl came from a corner of the mountain. Uh, you girl, you need to come out and take a walk more often. When you go to the West City to inquire, you know him. My father is quite famous in the East City. Wei Furong is indeed somewhat famous in the Eastern City, but this reputation is not very good, mainly brought by Wei Hao. Go back and ask your father when he will come. I have something to talk to him about, Li Lizzie snorted coldly. Talking. Talking about what? 
Wei Hao looked at Li Lizzy without understanding. Talking about the cooperation of this restaurant, Li Lizzy said. It's useless for you to talk to him, you have to talk to me. This restaurant belongs to me, Wei Hao said proudly to Li Lizzy at the moment. What? Yours. Li Lizzy carefully looked at Wei Hao. Although he was tall and impressive, he was not much older than herself. Moreover, with his carefree appearance, he could open such a restaurant. Well, it's mine. Girl, you just inquired about so much about me. So I'll also inquire about you. Where is your family from? Who is your father? I'll have my father propose to your house. Wei Hao said to Li Lizzy with a smile at the moment. End of this chapter. Chapter 8 Failure You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 8 Failure Chapter 8 As soon as Wei Hao spoke, Li Li's face turned pale with anger. There was no such person who would talk about marriage proposals in front of him. The key is that he is a princess, and he dares to be so humiliated, just like last time he whistled, he is simply audacious. Do you want to die? Shut up. Deng Tuzi, do you want to die? The women next to him immediately stood up, and two of them even drew their soft swords from their waists. No, why did you do it? You're not being reasonable, girl. The saying goes, a girl from a hundred families asks for a marriage proposal. If you don't agree, then don't force it. However, now it's important to follow the orders of parents and the matchmaker's words. Don't worry, I'll designate a good matchmaker to come to your house and make this marriage a success. Wei Hao looked at Li Lizzy with disdain and said, speaking and pulling out his sword. Humph, let's go. Li Lizzy didn't want to talk to this person at the moment, it was almost infuriating. However, there was still a hint of joy in her heart. At least, someone liked her and said it openly. Ah. Let's go now. Tell me where you live. Don't worry, the dowry will definitely be enough and won't embarrass you. Wei Hao shouted as he saw Li Lizzy about to leave. Li Lizzy blushed and couldn't help but accelerate her pace. I want to teach him a lesson, it's shameless, said one of the women with a sword angrily. Let's go. Don't expose your identity here. Li Lizzy said without looking back. Really go, okay, slow down, it's free. It's my treat and I'll come any time in the future. As long as you come, it's free. Anyway, it's our own home, so come as you please. Wei Hao chased after him. Li Li was extremely angry and quickly left. Before leaving, she asked the people behind to throw a bag of money, probably containing a consistent amount of money. Wei Hao regretfully came down from upstairs, feeling very regretful in his heart. Hey, it's really a failure, I didn't even ask for the name. Li Lizzy, on the other hand, was very angry all the way. How could such a person dare to tease her? Your Highness, why did you let him go so easily? A maid behind asked Li Lizzy. His business in this restaurant is very good, and now there is a serious deficit in internal funds. I don't understand even if I tell you. Can you send someone to investigate him and his father, and see if there are other forces involved in this restaurant? If not, we need to collaborate with him. Jingda Tower, we probably won't be able to open it. With such delicious food, we can't find a second one in Chang'an City Li Lizzy frowned in front and said, still very worried about the internal funds. After arriving at the palace, Li Lizzy reported the situation of the restaurant to Empress Chang'an. Empress Chang'an had just given birth and frowned upon hearing Li Lizzy's report. Mother, if that's the case, the deficit of funds this year is estimated to reach 40,000 guanxian. It's only May now and we have already lost more than 18,000 guanxian. Li Lizzy sat there and said to Empress Chang'an. Well, do you mean to cooperate with that Jushin building? Will they cooperate? Empress Chang'an asked. I don't know yet, I'm still investigating. I don't know if the other party has any influence involved. If there is, it will be difficult to handle. 
this restaurant is very profitable. I see that there is a constant stream of guests in this restaurant, and I heard that the food is also very expensive, so the profit margin is definitely much higher than that of Jing the restaurant Li Lizzy reported to Empress Changsun. Let's talk about it, but remember not to forcefully snatch, otherwise your father will know and Dragon Yen will be furious. Empress Changsun looked at Li Lizzy and explained. Li Lizzy nodded, and in the afternoon, information about Wei Furong and Wei Hao appeared in Li Lizzy's hands. A fool. Li Lizzy saw this report and felt very incredulous. It's true, I didn't believe it at first, but people in the West City all said so. Wei Hao, who fights outside every day, feels like his head is missing a string, very impulsive. The maid who went to investigate said to Li Lizzy. At this moment, Li Lizzy smiled, no wonder she had such frivolous behavior. Emotions are mentally flawed. Your Highness, I think it's better for us to talk to Wei Furong about cooperation, the maid suggested to Li Lizzy. No, he's a fool. If he doesn't agree, what should he do? The key is to find him. If he nods, his father won't agree. Take a look, how much money did his father lose for him? It's obvious that his father dotes on him very much, and it's not surprising. He's the only son in the family, and it's a single story from five generations. Hee <laughs> hee. Li Lizzy couldn't help but laugh when she saw Wei Hao's investigation report. Yes, then, go find him tomorrow. Their family doesn't have much influence, on the contrary, the Wei family occasionally goes to blackmail their money. Besides, it seems that this restaurant was really created by Wei Hao, so it's also right to find him. The maid nodded and agreed with Li Lizzy's statement. The next noon, Wei Hao sat there practicing calligraphy, unable to do anything. The handwriting was too ugly, and the key was boredom. There was nothing to do or to entertain himself, so he could only write. Fool. Li Lizzy walked up to the front and saw Wei Hao writing there, shouting Wei Hao's nickname. Wei Hao looked up and it turned out to be Li Lizzy. How do you know my name? Are you looking up me? Are you interested in me? I'll tell you, I'm called a fool, but I'm not stupid. Don't listen to what others say. Follow me, you won't be at a disadvantage. Wei Hao stood up happily and said proudly to Li Lizzy. Who's interested in you? Can you stop talking nonsense with that mouth? Li Lizzy was so shy. If she hadn't known he was a fool, she would have really been angry today. But when she found out, she realized that she couldn't get angry and instead felt it was interesting. Are you still checking me? No, I want to check you too. Say, what's your name? Wei Hao looked at Li Lizzy seriously and asked. Li Changle. What else do you want to know? Li Lizzy stared at Wei Hao and asked. Who is the father? Who is the mother? Where does the family live, is there a marriage? Is there a crush, is that me? Wei Hao asked several questions with a wicked smile, and Li Lizzy stomped her feet there, feeling extremely shy. I'll tell you about this another day. I came to see you today because I have something to do. Li Lizzy knew that Wei Hao was a fool, but she didn't want to argue with him. It's important to take matters seriously. Oh, have you eaten yet? Wei Hao listened and continued to ask. No. Do you like to eat roast duck? Wei Hao continued to ask. Not bad. Li Lizzy nodded slightly. Okay, let's go. Wei Hao waved his hand and led Li Lizzy up to the second floor. On the second floor, Wei Hao gave orders and came over to sit opposite Li Lizzy. He carefully looked at Li Lizzy, who was truly born beautiful. The key was her temperament, which Wei Hao liked. TSK TSK TSK, let me tell you, tell me where your house is, and I insist that my father go to your house to propose marriage. Wei Hao said very satisfied there. Do you believe me to throw you out of the second floor? Li Lizzy glared at Wei Hao and threatened. Okay, don't be angry, don't be angry. That anger is not good for the skin, it can easily cause crow's feet, 
and it's not good. Dot looking. Wei Hao quickly raised his hand and said to Li Lizzie. Then Li Lizzie said that she wanted to cooperate with Wei Hao. After finishing, Wei Hao looked at Li Lizzie in surprise. What's wrong, can we do it? Li Lizzie stared at Wei Hao. Are you stupid? As my wife, the entire restaurant belongs to you. Are you still cooperating? What kind of cooperation is there? As long as your parents nod, I'll give you this restaurant as a gift. Wei Hao said proudly to Li Lizzie. Li Lizzie heard this and was furious. She was about to hit Wei Hao with chopsticks. No, no, no. Wei Hao quickly dodged. Say it again, I have someone tear up your mouth. No wonder you fight outside every day. It's strange that your mouth hasn't been beaten to death. Li Li was so angry that she pointed her chopsticks at Wei Hao and said. I usually don't lose in a fight, Wei Hao said proudly. Tell you serious things, will it be successful? Li Lizzi sat down angrily and said to Wei Hao. Why? If you say, cooperate, then cooperate. Do you think I'm stupid? Wei Hao also sat down and said with a smile. Aren't you stupid? You're already a fool, okay? As long as you cooperate, this restaurant, no matter what happens, I can guarantee that you are safe and sound. No one dares to act recklessly in your restaurant, Li Lizzie said seriously as she stared at Wei Hao. Are you really fake? Who are you from? The daughter of the duke or the daughter of the prince? Wei Hao asked curiously as he looked at Li Lizzie. Are you afraid? Li Lizzie provocatively stared at Wei Hao and asked. What are you afraid of, sooner or later you will marry me? Wei Hao said again. Li Lizzie immediately picked up the chopsticks, and Wei Hao quickly said, All right, all right, I won't talk anymore. It's not possible. Can't do it. Why? Li Lizzie was stunned and stared at Wei Hao, asking. I don't even know who your father is, why cooperate with you? What if you cheat me? Are you joking? My restaurant has a profit of over 40 guan yuan per day and over 1,000 guan yuan per month. If you want to cooperate, you need to divide at least half of my money. With just one word from you, can I believe you? Wei Hao sat there, looking at Li Li Xian contemptuously. Li Li Xian heard the same, but for a while, she didn't want to reveal her royal identity, so she sat there and thought about it. Is your family short of money? Wei Hao asked when he saw that Li Lizzie had not spoken. Hmm <laughs> hmm. Li Lizzie nodded and spoke. You said that as a national official, you can still lack money. How much do you need? Say, I'll lend it to you. Wei Hao said grandly to Li Lizzie. 40,000 Guan Xian. Do you have it? Li Lizzie sneered as she looked at Wei Hao and asked. How much more? Wei Hao stood up in shock and looked at Li Lizzie, his eyes almost scared. 40,000 Guan Xian. Didn't you say you lent it to me? It's just your mansion, don't you have 40,000 Guan Xian, right? Li Lizzie continued to smile as she looked at Wei Hao and asked. Are you here to take care of me? Are you idle? Are you here to make such a joke with me when you have nothing to do? Wei Hao looked at Li Lizzie dejectedly and said, I'm short of so much money, so I came to find my own small shop. This small shop earns at least 15,000 guan a year, which is not enough. End of this chapter. What do you want in chapter 9? You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 9 What do you want? Chapter 9 Upon hearing Li Lizzie say 40,000 guan of money, Wei Hao immediately believed that the other party was here to adjust himself. What does conditioning mean? Li Lizzie didn't understand the meaning of Wei Hao's words and asked him. Just come and play with me, make fun of me, and have fun with me. Do you understand? Wei Hao looked at Li Lizzie very dissatisfied and said. Why do you say that? Li Lizzie still looked at Wei Hao puzzled, she really didn't mean it. Your family has a shortfall of 40,000 guan yuan, 
so you came to find my small shop. My annual profit is at its peak of 15,000 guan yuan, and how much is still missing? The key is that you have such a large shortfall now. What's the use of finding my small shop? How could my small shop make so much money all at once? Wei Hao looked at Li Lizzie and said, feeling that the other party was just looking for him to be happy. The gap I'm talking about is the gap for this year, although there is still a considerable gap, it still needs to be filled slowly, right? If nothing is done, isn't the gap even bigger? Besides, I don't expect your store to make up for these gaps. Li Lizzie said to Wei Hao with a slightly low mood, thinking of how much money is still missing, she didn't know what to do. Although this matter is not her responsibility, it is the Empress's responsibility. As the eldest daughter, she still wants to share some of the burden on her mother, especially at this time when she is still in postpartum confinement and has no intention of managing these matters. Even if she is not in postpartum confinement, the Empress cannot personally manage it and still needs her own help. This kind of thing cannot be entrusted to other concubines. Although it can be entrusted to the royal family, it is still a matter of reliable talent. However, in terms of commerce, the royal family has no suitable person, so Li Lizzie is very worried. Wei Hao saw her sitting there frowning and leaned over to look. Li Lizzie noticed a big face appearing in front of him and immediately looked at Wei Hao with caution, asking, What do you want? Think, oh no, is that very worried? At least your family is also a duke. With so little money, are you still worried? Wei Hao immediately asked undercover. So much money. You go and inquire about which duke's family can come up with so much cash. 40,000 guan is not 4,000 guan, and even 4,000 guan in cash, no one can come up with it. Li Lizzie sneered at Wei Hao, realizing that this person was quite ignorant. However, thinking that Wei Hao came out from the West City, I don't know and I can understand. Oh, if you didn't get that much money, how would your family punish you and betroth you? Wei Hao looked at Li Lizzie and asked, which was his concern. Why are you asking this? Li Lizzie stared at Wei Hao and asked. Of course I have to ask. If we want to be betrothed, I'll pay for it. I'll figure out a way to get it done. If it's not allowed to be betrothed, then let it go. I don't think you, a little girl, can handle this kind of thing. Let your family take care of it, Wei Hao said with a smile and a wave of his hand. Wei Hao is still a bit confident in earning this money. Who wouldn't know how to talk big? With 40,000 guan of money, can you make it back in a year? Are you here to deal with me? Li Lizzi looked at Wei Hao incredulously, completely incredulous. What's 40,000 guan worth? Even 400,000 guan is not a problem. Alas, unfortunately, I don't have a good father. If my father were a national official, I would definitely dare to make money like this. But my father is an ordinary person, and of course he is better than ordinary people. He still has some money, so if I make so much money, I won't be able to hold on. Wei Hao sat there, pretending to be sad and said. Li Lizzie heard it and pursed her lips, not believing it at all. She found that Wei Hao was not only silly, but also liked to talk big. Don't believe it. Don't believe it. What's earning money? Look at my restaurant. I invested over 500 guan of money, and in a few days, I'll be back on track. With so much money invested in a restaurant, you can make 30 times the profit in a year. Can you do it? You have to admit my ability to make money, Wei Hao continued to boast. Of course, this is not just a boast, but also a fact. Humph. Li Lizzie snorted coldly, although she admitted in her heart that Wei Hao's statement was true, she couldn't stand his petty and successful expression. Never mind, I won't talk to you, this girl. One day when I earn 40,000 guan, I will propose marriage to your father. I don't believe it. I can't break your father with money. Wei Hao smiled and stood up, saying that the conversation was over. Anyway, Wei Hao won't let this restaurant go. Wait, sit down. 
I haven't finished speaking yet. I want half of the shares in this restaurant, and I'll give you 1,000 guan now. Besides, as long as I invest, no matter who causes trouble in the future, you can do whatever you want. If something happens, I'll take responsibility. Li Lizzy stood up and shouted to Wei Hao, who was about to leave. You can pull it down, you're bragging to me. When I was bragging, you didn't even know where I was. Wei Hao waved his hand and said, not believing at all that a woman dared to say such big things. Fool, I'm serious. Li Lizzy said anxiously, considering whether she wanted to reveal her identity now. No, why do you manage your family's money as a girl? What about your brothers and parents? They don't care about this. Wei Hao asked impatiently as he looked at Li Lizzy. My father and father are not at home, and my mother is now, um, sick. My brother is just a young master, and our family still lacks so much money. If we can't get this money, then my parents will be very difficult to deal with. Li Lizzy looked at Wei Hao with a pitiful expression and said. Tisk. Wei Hao looked at Li Lizzy dejectedly and walked back helplessly. He sat down and said, You just said you have 1,000 guan. Besides, in the capital, can you handle things? What does Ping Shi mean? Li Lizzy looked at Wei Hao in confusion. If there are officials or powerful individuals in business, such as a national official who comes to snatch our business, can you handle them? Wei Hao rubbed his forehead and explained helplessly. Of course not, they don't have the courage to take my things, Li Lizzy said confidently, with some confidence in her. Give me 1,000 guan of money and we will work together. I only provide technical expertise. You will provide a venue that is large and needs to be located by the river, with a minimum area of 100 acres. Can you provide it? Wei Hao looked at Li Lizzy and continued to ask. Sure, but what do you want? I want to buy shares in your restaurant for 1,000 guan. Li Li looked at Wei Hao in confusion and asked. Can buying this restaurant make up for the shortfall in your family? Now I want to use that 1,000 guan to make you 40,000 guan before this winter. Of course, I also want to make 40,000 guan, and I want to own 50% of the shares. Wei Hao said to Li Lizzy. Are you serious about this? Li Lizzy heard it and looked skeptical, completely disbelieving. Upon hearing her say this, Wei Hao immediately stood up and prepared to leave. Such a lack of trust in people would hurt his self-esteem. Hey, wait a minute, what you're saying is unbelievable. Li Lizzy didn't believe Wei Hao's words at the moment, but she didn't want to miss this opportunity. Of course, she hoped for the opportunity to cooperate with the restaurant. When I say you, what are you afraid of? Just say, is this restaurant worth 1,000 guan? You have investigated my family background so clearly. Are you, the daughter of the Duke of China? Are you saying that I have enough to eat and have nothing to do? If I come to deceive you into playing, my head will be on end. Wei Hao said to Li Lizzy. Li Lizzy heard it and nodded, yes. I'm really brainless, Wei Hao said contemptuously. Who are you saying is brainless? I think you're tired of living. Li Lizzy heard Wei Hao say this and was furious. She raised her fist and threatened Wei Hao. Just like you, come 100, no pressure, Wei Hao said nonchalantly. Humph, if you can earn 1,000 yuan, that's 1,000 yuan. But to be clear, if I can't make that much money, I'll take half of the share of this restaurant, Li Lixian warned as she stared at Wei Hao. Sure, but you need to protect this restaurant now. If someone yellows it, don't blame me, Wei Hao said with a smile to Li Lizzy. Bad businessmen. Li Lizzy only realized at this moment and stared at Wei Hao, then thought for a moment and asked, why don't you let me join this restaurant? Nonsense, this restaurant is used by me to see girls. My dad said he wants me to have a son for the polo team. My family has five generations of singles, and my dad wants me to marry more daughters-in-law and have more sons. Can I give it to you? Wei Hao said proudly to Li Lizzy. 
Li Lizzie didn't know why he was so proud, what could be proud of such a thing? Dang Tuzi. All right, you can eat now. I'll go down and take a look. Let me tell you, these past few days, I've found quite a few beautiful girls. However, they're not as good dot looking as you, but they're still okay. I've come up with the money and we'll work together. Wei Hao smiled and said to Li Lizzie. Get out, I don't want to see you, Li Lizzie smiled and said to Wei Hao, feeling happy. She was still the most beautiful, and soon Wei Hao went out. Li Lizzie started eating when the dishes were ready. Hey, what about going to other restaurants in the future with such delicious food? Li Lizzie sighed. Yes, your highness, how else can you taste the food from these other restaurants? Another maid followed suit. At this moment, at Wei Hao's house, Wei Furong was eating the food at home, which was also difficult to swallow. Until now, he has not found a suitable cook. Stop eating, this brat. I haven't had enough to eat for a month. Look, I've been starving and thin. Let's go to his restaurant to see what this kid is really busy with. He can't see anyone all day long. Wei Furong touched his stomach, threw away his chopsticks, angrily carrying his hands behind his back and going out to find Wei Hao. The servant next to him smiled awkwardly and politely. Yes, he used to be as fat as a pig, but now he's as thin as a pig. End of this chapter 10, Chapter 10 White-Eyed Wolf You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 10 White-Eyed Wolf Chapter 10 Wei Furong is very angry. It's been a month and he hasn't seen this son. He just wakes up every morning and hears the gatekeeper say that the young master has gone out. Quickly, Wei Furong sat in his family's carriage and arrived at the east side of the city. He knew the approximate location of his son's restaurant, but he was not sure what its name was and which street it was on. He had originally planned to let Wei Hao calm down a bit with this 600 guan, not to cause trouble for him. He wanted to live a few more years. Master, we don't know where the restaurant is, said a steward surnamed Lu to Wei Furong in the mansion. Then go look for it. If there's any business that's not good, just go in and take a look. This kid thinks the restaurant is so easy to open. Wei Furong sat on the carriage and said to manager Lu. Yes, sir, then let's go find it. Manager Lu nodded and instructed the servants to find it. After all, the people working in the tavern were also from the mansion, and those servants knew each other. As soon as they entered, they would know if it was from their own mansion. I searched around but couldn't find any restaurants that didn't have much business. Master, I haven't found it. Did the young master take this money to play? Steward Lu looked at Wei Furong and reported at the moment. And Wei Furong is extremely angry at this moment. The more he thinks about it, the more likely it is that he goes out to play every day, isn't it? Humph. It's just that. I gave him this 600 guan, and I didn't plan on looking back at the money. Let's go eat at a crowded restaurant. I haven't had a good meal for a month now, and I'm going to have a good meal today. After finishing it, I'm going to beat this stinky kid to death tonight. How dare you deceive me? Wei Furong said angrily. He thought he would block Wei Hao's room and fight tonight. No big deal, if he goes to bed later tonight, he will hit this kid no matter what. Quickly, they arrived at the entrance of Jushin building. Master, look, there's still a queue here. The taste is probably not bad. You wait on the carriage, I'll go queue up, and when the queue arrives, the master will come out again. Steward Lu said to Wei Furong. Wei Furong nodded, because it was already very late and many people in the restaurant had finished eating, so the queue behind them quickly entered. We soon arrived at Wei Furong and the others. Wei Furong took manager Lu inside and just as they entered, they saw Wei Hao sitting inside the counter, writing something with a brush. Sir, is this our restaurant? Manager Lu looked at Wei Furong in shock and asked. Wei Furong was also surprised. Just now, Wei Furong knew how good the business of this restaurant was, 
and he also heard from the customers who had finished their meals how they evaluated the food of this restaurant. They all said something special about Chang'an, and so on. He was still thinking that he had come to the right place this time and was going to have a good meal. Unexpectedly, after waiting in line for a long time, it turned out to be his own restaurant. Thinking of this, Wei Furong was so angry that he quickly walked to the counter and walked around inside. Manager Lu quickly followed suit. Ouch! Wei Hao suddenly felt a pain in his ear and stood up. Just as he was about to fight back, he saw Wei Furong's chubby face. Dad, why did you hit me? Wei Hao was feeling depressed. Why did dad hit himself when he had nothing to do? You stinky kid, I have to queue for half a day outside to have a meal, right? Wei Furong shouted at Wei Hao. Dad, dad. Let go, it hurts, it hurts, it falls, and if it falls, you won't be able to marry a wife. Wei Hao quickly grabbed Wei Furong's hand. When Wei Furong heard him say this, he let go of his hand, and Wei Hao quickly rubbed his ear. At your own restaurant, if you insist on queuing up, are you blaming me? Aren't you coming in directly? Wei Hao was very frustrated, and he didn't ask him to queue up. How did I know that this restaurant belongs to our family? Wei Furong shouted confidently. You are the head of the family, and you don't even know if this restaurant belongs to our family. Are you still bothering me? Are you pulling my ear? Wei Hao also shouted loudly at Wei Furong. Upon hearing this, Wei Furong felt a bit unreasonable and was still very happy. He didn't expect that this restaurant's business would be so good. At this moment, Li Lizzy came down from upstairs. Have you finished? Free, or as the saying goes, as long as you come to eat, free. Our own restaurant, ah. Wei Hao said to Li Lizzy with a cheap smile and gave her a wink. Humph. Li Lizzy snorted coldly and walked away with her hands behind her back and her head tilted back. After Li Lizzy left, Wei Furong once again grabbed Wei Hao's other ear and said, You're a spendthrift. If you say you're free, you're free, don't you want any capital? Dad. You, let go, what do you know? Wei Hao became even more depressed. When did this old man learn to pull his ears? Loser, why did I give birth to such a thing as you? Wei Furong said angrily. Do you know who she is? She came to your place to eat, which is already a great face for you. She is the daughter of the Duke of China, and I gave her a free bill. Who dares to come to the restaurant to cause trouble in the future? I just mention her name, which is equivalent to using the restaurant's food to exchange for a protective umbrella. Do you understand? Saying you can't do business, don't you believe it? Look, this restaurant's business is so good, making more money, and you know it's guarding the poor and dilapidated area of Xichun. Wei Hao looked at Wei Furong with disdain and said. Wei Furong's words make sense. If the other party is really the daughter of the Duke of China, then if they establish this relationship, the restaurant can establish a foothold in the East City, and their own family income will be much higher in the future. Really? Oh my, my son has really grown up, gained insight, and made a name for himself. By the way, son, how much money can this restaurant make? Wei Furong immediately changed his face and asked this question with great concern. With so many people eating, theoretically, the daily profit will definitely not be less than 5 guan yuan. The people here have money, but they are much stronger than the restaurant they used to have in the western city. Hee <laughs> hee, don't worry, in a few days, I will return that 600 guan money to you. In the future, the money for this restaurant will be mine, Wei Hao said proudly to Wei Furong. What? Wei Furong looked at Wei Hao in shock. How are you, surprised? Wei Hao looked at Wei Furong more proudly and said. You brat, you just want to leave your father behind and do it alone. You heartless, why don't you just spend 600 guan on me? Oh, no conscience, you gave birth to a white-eyed wolf. Wei Furong looked sad and howled. 
TSK, how can you speak? Why don't you have a conscience? Isn't yours mine? Do you have other sons? Wei Hao looked at Wei Furong with disdain and said. He knew that Wei Furong was acting for himself. However, Wei Furong was calculating in his heart that before the restaurant opened for half a month, he would say he wanted to repay 600 guan to himself. After all, the monthly profit would not be lower than 600 guan, and the daily profit would be 20 guan. Wei Furong dared not think further down. Bunny, I don't care. I want to manage this restaurant, and the money belongs to me. I'm just a son like you. Mine is yours, and yours is also mine. But you haven't gotten married yet. When you get married, these will be given to you. If you don't get married, don't even think about it. Wei Furong pointed at Wei Hao, speaking seriously. Stop it. Wei Hao said nonchalantly. Humph, ask these workers who dare not listen to me, kid. You're still a little young, and I'll be your father after all. Wei Furong was very proud. The people in this restaurant are all from the family, and no one dares not listen to his own words. What? Now it's Wei Hao's turn to be anxious. Humph, my wings haven't even grown hard, so I just want to fly. I want to check my account, master. Wei Furong was so proud. The accountant in the restaurant looked at Wei Hao in embarrassment, but still honestly handed the ledger to Wei Furong. Dad, if you take back this restaurant, I won't get married. Do you know what I do with this restaurant? You ask them, I see girls here every day. When I meet beautiful girls, I inquire about their situation. Isn't it just to marry you? Why marry a daughter? In law? Give you grandchildren. You're not letting me be here now, okay, okay, I'm not getting married anymore. How can I see you go underground and meet those ancestors? Wei Hao sat there, his hands parted, playing pranks on me that no one had yet played with. Wei Furong's heart was trembling with fear as he said, What if his son doesn't get married? No, son, I won't give it to you either. When you get married, I'll give it to you. How do you understand business matters? Don't let the cooked ducks fly for you too. Wei Furong stood up hurriedly, persuading Wei Hao. He's afraid that Wei Hao won't get married, this fool, but he can do anything. Besides, if you know those girls, don't spend any money. Do I have to ask you for every penny? If I can't make any money, then there's nothing to say. But I made this restaurant, and if you want to take it back, what else should I do? I won't get married, and I'll fight tomorrow. Oh, it's still interesting to fight. Wei Hao sighed again, pretending to be deep. Don't worry, son. Fighting is boring. Dad should check the general ledger once a month, right? Also, you need to pay some money to your family every month. Dad won't take that money for free. Dad will buy you an estate, okay? Wei Furong quickly advised. How much should I give? Wei Hao asked sadly. You say it. Wei Furong said grandly. Is 600 Guan Xian okay? Wei Hao asked as he looked at Wei Furong. A year. Wei Furong asked with wide-eyed eyes, thinking to himself that it's okay, as long as you have money. A month. Wei Hao spoke. Okay, okay, of course okay, my son. You manage this restaurant, you manage everything. Dad is here to eat, really. You ask manager Lu, dad is here to eat. Wei Furong was quite surprised and even more satisfied when he heard that he would give 600 guan a month, so he quickly said yes. Let's go, my son will take you to the private room and prepare some good dishes for you to taste. Wei Hao was happy when he heard Wei Furong agree, and quickly took Wei Furong's hand as he was about to go upstairs. After returning to the palace, Li Lizzi immediately went to find Empress Changsun. Today, we still need to tell Empress Chang Sun about this matter, after all, there is still some hope. End of this chapter